I heard the farther north you go, the bluer the sky seems. Look at that. I hope the camera's capturing the right color blue. It is. It's not a pale blue, it's a beautiful up north blue. We're in the UP. Around the sticks. And it's a beautiful day. Leaves have not started changing yet, really. I think it's uh, mid September, I'm pretty sure. September 14th? I'm not sure. No biggie. I just love it that you can ride for miles and not hear a car, not see a car. I got the place to myself. I think it's still quiet hours. That's the Tequanama River. Soon to be instant coffee is so bad, but I drink it because it has caffeine. So I mix it with Swiss Miss to make it some kind of a latte, frappe. Can't decide whether I should ride or hold up today. I don't have a weather report. It's hard to believe it's daylight. It's about 10 a.m. We've got a heck of a storm coming. Glad I'm not out there pedaling. Gotta run for it, getting pelted. Coziest place in the world, I'm telling you. It's a nice dry tent. In the middle of a storm. It's soaked. It's working pretty good so far. I was on the lookout. And sure enough, there's water coming through the floor. giant puddle right here. And luckily I have a staging area. An emergency plastic bag. situation like this where you just gotta do it and get so
keep some of my stuff dry. Well, most of it. The important stuff. And it has been off and on rain. But look at the view. Look at the view. So much for drying my clothes on the fence. Well, I got a good night's sleep after my swim. Might have to quick find a spot and deploy the pop-up tent. Get out of this weather, but I'll ride until that happens. Got there just in time to escape the storm that I had prepared. I did wash this morning, but I didn't have time for it all to dry. So it's still a little damp. So I had to make my little shelter with my trusty tarp. And it looks just fine. Here's my little cook show. I'm trying to figure what I'll have for dinner. bed. You can't do that unless you're way, way out. I mean, those boughs were blocking the trail. So I just pinched them from there. But it's really nice because usually I have my tarp here for a floor mat. But that didn't work out because I needed it to keep the laundry dry. And then I can stand up to cook and do that outside. So I'm happy. The yellow bottle contains a product called Heat a fuel additive that's almost pure alcohol that I use to fuel my triad stove. I like it, but I couldn't get a steady supply in the UP because some auto parts stores or gas stations don't carry it. I like to use it instead of making a fire sometimes because it's quicker just to light the stove, and I hadn't been able to gather and cover up some firewood before the rain started. I usually do this because it's really hard to get a fire going with wet wood. The jar I'm using uh, contains Aunt Jemima Complete Pancake mix. I always buy complete so I don't have to add eggs or milk or oil. That's a huge innovation that saves time mixing, makes cleanup quicker and easier, and there are fewer ingredients to carry. Later in my trip I ditched the plastic shaker jar and replaced it with Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags are disposable. Yes, I always pack out my trash. I don't carry a spatula because I've gotten pretty good at flipping whatever is in my frying pan. I've had that frying pan for a few years and the nonstick coating is still good. I use lots of butter because I like lots of butter on my pancakes and that way I don't need to carry cooking oil to fry the pancakes. After breakfast I packed up and made sure my campsite was spotless. I was near Lake Superior and it was sandy. I had to push my loaded bike out to the main road because it would sink in the sand if I got on it and tried to ride it. The road was flooded in places with all the recent rain, so I had to push the bike around lots of huge puddles. They were deep. It was hot and hard work. It went on for eight or ten miles. As I persevered, the road got better and better, as usually happens with any challenge. On a remote road between Taquamanon Falls and Newberry, when I came across a large road-killed bear. He had been dead a while. His fatal blow was to the head, possibly from a truck bumper. He had gorged on berries for his last meal. I noticed about a dozen vultures in nearby trees. I wondered why they hadn't eaten him, but later learned from Wikipedia about the two kinds of vultures that live in North America. These were not black vultures because they were too far north, and black vultures aren't picky about how long an animal has been dead. They'll eat it anyway but turkey vultures have a much better sense of smell and they can find an animal much sooner after it dies. So they were too finicky to eat the bear. Fascinating stuff and gruesome. They were sulking in the far off trees, drawn to the carrion but disappointed in its condition. I wasn't too bothered by the smell, but the episode was a wake-up call for me. I was in such a vast wilderness that roadkill included bears, large bears and I hadn't seen a passing car or truck for over an hour.